This tutorial shows how to use the Orchestrator Studio to create a form request, which is a component of an orchestration that enables it to perform a business transaction in Enterprise One. In this tutorial, we'll use an example of creating a form request that will place a credit hold on a customer. Before you create a form request, you should always verify the steps that you want the form request to perform. So let's begin by reviewing the steps in Enterprise One to place a credit hold on a customer. Here in the Orchestrator Studio, the Tools page provides a link to easily access the Enterprise One sign-in screen. So let's sign in to Enterprise One. To perform a credit hold, first you access the Work With Addresses form and locate a customer number. So here in Work With Addresses, we'll enter 3001 for our customer. Then we click Find, and now we'll select the row, click the Row menu, and then the AR menu to access the Customer Master Revisions record for this customer. Here in this form, if you want to place a credit hold on a customer, you have to select the Credit tab, and then in the Credit Message field, enter a 7. So finally, you have to click the OK button to save it. Notice after saving, Enterprise One automatically returns us to the Work With Addresses form where you can see the customer record. Now that we've reviewed the steps to perform a credit hold, let's return to the Orchestrator Studio and configure a form request to perform these exact same steps. From the Studio homepage, let's access the Service Request page, and then access the Design page to create the new form request. On the Form Request page, you name the form request, give it a short description, and select a product code to associate with it. Here in the Available Actions area is where you identify and configure the Enterprise One controls and fields to carry out a credit hold. You then promote each field or control that you configure as an action to the Order of Execution area at the top, where you can verify the actions are in the correct order and rearrange them if needed. For this example, let's select the Application Stack option because this form request needs to call more than one application to perform a credit hold. Without Application Stack processing, the form request would open a separate Enterprise One session for each application accessed by the form request. So let's identify the actions by loading the first form used to perform a credit hold, which is the Work With Addresses form. Here we'll enter the Application Form and Version ID of the Work With Addresses form to load the fields and controls for this form in the Available Actions grid. Notice the first row in the grid contains a collapsible and expandable node for displaying the controls for the Work With Addresses form. The columns in this grid provide fields and options to configure the controls. First, the form request needs to locate the customer we want to place on a credit hold, so under the Work With Addresses QBE node, we'll locate the address number row which represents the address number QBE field. Here in the Map Value column, we'll enter Customer, which serves as a variable to pass in the address number of a customer to this form request. When adding this form request to an orchestration, you would define Customer as an input in the orchestration and then map it to this customer input in the form request. Now let's add this action to the Order of Execution area, which we can do by clicking Add Action at the end of this row. So if we scroll up to the top, you'll see that Address Number has now been added to the Order of Execution. After passing in the customer number, we want the form request to click the Find button to locate the customer record. So under the Button and Exits node, let's locate the Find button, and then at the end of the row, we'll click Add Action to add that to the order of execution. After performing a find, the Work With Addresses form will display the customer record in the first row of the grid, which we saw earlier. We want the form request to select this record, so under the Work With Addresses grid node, locate Select First Row, and then click Add Action to move it to the order of execution. Finally, we want the form request to access the account's receivable information for this customer. So under the Buttons and Exits node, locate the row with the AR menu and move it into the Order of Execution area. Now let's look at the Order of Execution area. And as you can see here, all actions are in the proper order. Next, you need to specify the controls used in the Customer Master Revision form to carry out the credit hold. So let's enter the IDs for the Customer Master Revision form. So if we now collapse the Work With Addresses node, notice that the Orchestrator Studio added another node for the Customer Master Revision form. Let's expand it to see the fields and controls. 
On the credit tab of this form, remember that we want to place a 7 in the credit message field to place the customer's credit on hold. So under the Customer Master Revision node, locate the row for the credit message field and in the default value column, enter 7. And then move this to the order of execution area. The final action required on this form is to click OK to save the updated customer record, which if you remember in Enterprise One, automatically returns you to the Work With Addresses form. So let's locate the OK control under the Buttons and Exits node and then add it to the order of execution. After performing a credit hold, we want to configure the form request to return the customer name in case later you decide to use the name in a subsequent step of an orchestration. For example, you could configure an orchestration that after placing a credit hold uses a message service request to send a message with the customer's name and customer number to an account representative. So in this example, let's configure one more action to return the customer name from the Work With Addresses form. So at the top of the Available Actions area again, let's enter the IDs to load the Work With Addresses form. So notice that we cannot use the first Work With Addresses node to define the next action because this next action occurs after the actions in the Customer Master Revision form. So we'll collapse the Customer Master Revision node. So you can see here that another node has been added for Work With Addresses. So let's expand this node. Let's locate the alpha name row. In this row, we'll click the checkbox in the return column. And in the adjacent variable name column, we'll enter a customer name. When you add this form request to an orchestration, the customer name variable is automatically added as another orchestration input. This enables you to map the customer name returned from this form request to another step in the orchestration, such as a message request. So lastly, let's save this form request so here on the main service request page, let's locate the form request that we just created. You can click on it to view a graphical representation of each form configured in the form request. So that's it. We have successfully created a form request. Now when added to an orchestration, can place a hold on a customer's credit. To learn more about the features shown here and other form request features, see the J.D. Edwards Enterprise One Tools Orchestrator Guide. Thank you. Thank you.